Now, you could possibly violate the law of demand for the Marshallian demand curve if you had a good that had a high share and was significantly inferior and the substitution effect was sufficiently weak. This is the so-called Giffen good case. Right? The Giffen good case is very weak substitution effect. So when prices fall, you don't increase your consumption very much from the substitution effect. On the other hand, you spend a lot of your money on it. So when the price falls, you're a lot richer. And at the same time, it's also very inferior. So as you get richer, you want less of it. That could actually cause you to violate the law of demand. It's not easy to find Giffen goods because you need, first of all, a combination of a high share and low income elast and, net and, and inferior. Easy to find things that have a high share. Trouble is most of those are normal, so it's not going to help. Now, and people have searched and searched, and they think they might have found it in some places, haven't found it in others, been able to create it in a laboratory with rats. You know, there's all kinds of things you can do to, to try to get a gift and good. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because actually most of those searches just prove the theory. That is, if you're going to find one, you got to look for a place where this isn't too big, this is big, and that's negative. That's where you look. And if to the place where you think you can find one, that's, that's where people have tried to look. And they've looked at, you know. Basically, they look at people who are very poor, spend a lot of their income on a kind of food that they don't really like very much, and would love to buy something that tastes better if they could if they could survive and do it. That's classic place to look for a, a gift and good. Not surprisingly, that's what the theory says. That's where you should find them. Uh, any, uh, any questions that people have?